IPv6 routing. The next thing what we'll see, uh, like if you remember we in the previous sections, we have already covered most of the things like the basic IPv6 address configurations. And and now we, we need to ensure that the router one is connecting to router two. Now these two routers must be able to communicate with each other. Now to do that, we can implement some routing configurations. Now the concept of routing is more exactly the same what we have done in IP version four. Like in IPv6 also, we have a static routing, just the same thing like manual configuration. Syntax is also similar what we did in IP version four. And then we have something called RAPNG. Now in IP version four, we have RAP version two. Now here we call as RAPNG, next generation RAP. Now when it comes to the, uh, the what we say the metric or anything, the features, everything remains the same. The maximum hop counts, again here also 15, and the metric is calculated based on the hop counts. Everything is same, but the only difference is the way we configure. Now similar way here, ISS also support IPv6. We'll get into ISS, it's a different protocol here. And it also supports IPv6 and then OSP of V3. The protocol which we use for IP version 4 is OSP of V2. Now here we call it as OSP of V3. And then the BGP which we use for IP version 4, which was initially uh, deployed, now it supports something called MPBGP. Now when you say MPBGP means it not only supports IPv4, it also supports IPv6 and VPN v4, VPN v6, which are more relating to MPLS concepts. You know, that's what we call as MP, MPBGP multi protocol. And then EHRP for IP version 6, uh, almost uh, most of the Cisco IOS support all of these features. Now initially, first we'll start with static routing in this section here. Now one more thing we need to keep in mind, whenever we, are, we want to use IPv6 routing, it has to be enabled before you use any of the routing process. Now we need to give a command called IPv6 unicast routing. Now this command is more equivalent to IP routing command which we do in IP version 4. Because this IP routing command is by default enabled in all the Cisco IVs. So that's the reason we don't really need to give this command unless or until you do, it, you do you give something no IP routing. Okay, which is something we don't do. So if you disable it, then only you need to do it manually enable but by default it is enabled. But in most of the Cisco IVs, the IPv6 routing is disabled. So you'll get a message saying that IPv6 routing is not enabled whenever you try to configure any of the uh, routing configurations. So you need to make sure that we enable IPv6 unicast routing command before we start using any of the routing configurations. And the next thing, let's move on with static routing. Now the concept of static routing is exactly the same what we have learned in IP version 4. So I'm not going to get into in detail of those things. So I expect you to know uh, that different uh, how to configure static routing or what is static routing and what are the features and, and all about that. Now the syntax of writing the static route and the default route is more similar in IP version 6 when we compare with IP version 4. Now more similar means if you see here, now router 1 I want to ensure that the router one should write a route for the router to LAN interface. Now what will be the command we use? We need to give a command called IP route. Now here we say IPv6 route, right? Destination network ID. What is the destination network ID here? It is FC 00 colon 22 colon 22 colon 22 and then colon colon. So when I say colon colon, which means it can be anything after that. So normally you know that the network portion represents the host portion will be always zeros whenever we write the network ID. So we need to write the network ID and then we need to write the subnet mask. So the subnet mask is slash 64 and then the next hop IP address. So what is our next hop IP address here? Next hop IP address is this 2001 12 colon 12 colon 12 colon colon 2 to something here. So we are writing the next hop IP address here. Now if you see the syntax is same, it's almost similar. Instead of IP, we write IPv6. Uh, destination ID is still the same. Instead of 255, we write slash value. And then the next hop address, we need to write the next hop address or we can also write our own exit interface. Let's say I have S1 by zero interface. I can write my own exit interface. Now the syntax for static route is exactly the same. Now let's say if you want, 
to configure the default routing, how we write the statement. Now, if you want to configure default routing, we need to give IPv6 route destination network ID. So in case of normal IPv4, we say IP route 0000, which means whatever be the destination and then 0000, whatever be the subnet mask. And we write the next top IP address, let's say 1.1.1.2. Now in case of IPv6 also, we, we write the same IPv6 route 0 colon colon represents this one, all zeros and then slash 0, which is going to represent the subnet mask and then write the next top IP address 2001 12 colon 12 colon 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 2, something like this. Now this is the way we, we configure the default routing and the concept of default routing again, it's the same thing. If you want to route any traffic for any unknown destinations, we use default routing. So just like internet. So the concept wise static and default routing are exactly the same, no changes, but the way we configure is something like this. So let's try to verify the same thing practically here. Now for verifying the things practically, I have two routers, exactly the same two routers, which we configured. And these two routers are already pre-configured with IPv6 addresses. Like if you remember in our basics, uh, previous sessions we have covered that how to assign the IPv6 address on an interface. So if you verify show IPv6 interface brief Now already this interface is assigned with this address whatever you can see in the diagram and I also have one more address which we which we used in stateless auto configuration it doesn't make difference anyway so let it be uh, let it be like that only so we don't we are not going to use that address or disturb that address now this is just to sh show you that okay single interface can also have a multiple ipv6 addresses now the van interface s0 by 0 is exactly configured with the same ipv6 address whatever you see on the screen in the diagram now the same way on the router 2 also the lan interface is fc0022 it's it's configured as as a diagram here and the van interface also is configured exactly the same way now what's the next thing now we need to go to config mode. We need to configure a static route and then I'm going to say IPv6 route, destination network ID FC00 colon 22 colon 22 colon 22 colon colon, which means host portion can be all zeros and then the subnet mask and I'm going to write the next top IP address 12 colon 2001 colon 12 colon 12 colon colon one, sorry, colon colon two. And here I have to use Okay, now no error message, which means the command uh, is correct. And if you verify show IPv6 route, so normally we give show IP route, we here we have to say show IPv6 route. Now you must see something called C, C represents a connected interface, mostly the connected network. And L represents the local local IP or local addresses, whatever you have configured on, on this specific interface. And then you'll see something called S. S is going to represent a static route. And just now we configured a static route for FC00 colon 22 colon 22 colon 22. And whatever is, uh, whatever, when, whenever any packet is destined for this network, it will be sent automatically on to the next stop of 2001, 12 colon 12, 12, 12, and then colon colon 2. Okay, done. Now, similar way, we need to do opposite side as well IPv6 route. I'm going to say FC00 colon 11 colon 11 colon 11 colon colon that is a network ID and then subnet mask and then 2001 12 colon 12 colon 12 colon colon 1 right the next stop done so if everything is okay then I should be able to see the route in the routing table you can see show IPv6 route I can see the static route now finally from the router 2 you must be able to ping to the router 1 LAN interface okay anyway I don't have any PCs to verify here but if you are able to ping to router 1 LAN interface which is 11 one, one, colon colon 1 it's going to confirm that routing is correct now it's not taking the reason is I did not enable the IPv6 unicast routing. So that's the problem here actually. So I need to go to router 1 as well. I need to enable IPv6 unicast routing. Let me try one more time after enabling this command. So 
so there is some problem here let me check show ipv6 route fc00 colon 1111111 and colon colon 1 three portions and then so i got the reason here why we are not able to communicate if i try to ping from the router to lan interface um, i'm not able to ping you can see unreachable messages are coming because the reason is this interface status is up and down because in my gns here i i did not connect the lan interface and if you go to my interface interface at 0 by 0 i removed that uh, key pillar command here that's the reason so the interface is down that's the reason it is showing so either you provide a connection or simply give no key pillar to make the interface up so that it should start working show ipv6 interface brief now it's up so there was an interface issue so now i should be able to ping here okay now similar way if you want you can try from the router one lan interface to router to lan interface till you should be able to ping now similar way i'll quickly reconfigure remove the static routing just add no before that and the same thing i'm going to do on the router 2 as well i will remove the static routing whatever i have created and i'm going to use the default routing so i didn't remove it yeah now it is removed so to configure default route, we need to say IPv6 route. Those don't use default route on both the sides, but still you can use on one side. I can say zero colon colon, whatever be the destination and slash zero, whatever be the subnet mask. And I'm going to say one two colon one two colon one two colon colon two is the next hop. So if I verify the routing table, if I give show IPv6 route, I can see there's a static route learn or configured and you can see something like this. So this represents it's a default route in IP version six. Now same thing on the router two as well, we are going to say IPv6 route zero colon colon slash zero. And then next hopper is 2001 colon one two colon one two colon one two colon colon one. Okay. So the next hop is correct. So if I give show IPv6 route, you can see the route. Now still i should be able to communicate because you know through default routing also i can communicate because anything comes on the router 2 interface it will automatically send to router 1 and router 1 will send to its lan interface now the configuration of default routing is exactly the same way we configure the static routing so this is the way we configure but when it comes to concepts or the technology or the way they work it's exactly the same what we have learned in ip version 4 